Hi there guys and welcome to the second episode of Fishing Bits and Bobs on the On The Bank Angling Fishing Channel. This episode is going to follow in the same vein as the first in that you're going to be following us through our sessions and what we've been doing on the bank recently. We're starting off on the Bristol Avon where I was targeting chub on bread flake and later on in the video we'll be targeting pike on the Hampshire Avon and the Bristol Avon and we're even going to be doing a bit of carp fishing on a local commercial fishery. So to start with we're here on the beautiful Bristol Avon. What a be is there a better place to spend a cold winter's day? I certainly didn't think so. And uh, tried a number of different swims, just flicking bread in under the trees to try and catch chub. I was quite lucky in that I caught a couple at the start, but then a lot of the swims, I have to say, was staring at blank rod tips, not moving. So uh, yeah, but anyway, here we go. Follow me through this little session and see how I got on. Well guys, it's uh, been a couple of hours, um, I was only ever going to give it a few hours but I'm in my last swim of the day, it's been a bit of a disaster so far so I'm hoping I've saved the best swim till last. Um, I've put in first cast and I've had a really hard bang, I've struck at it and missed it so that's usually the sign that there's a chub there, I should have left it really but because I've been struggling to get bites I got a bit overexcited I think but um, yeah well I'll give it another cast and we'll see if we can get one out hopefully for you. Um, it might just be a combination of the, the way the temperatures just dropped all of a sudden, maybe the fish are off the feed. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to make excuses, let's see if we can get one out. Well, here we go, guys. I was right, there was a big chub in the swim. There we go, we'll get him in the net. There we go, guys, got one in the end. Um, called it right, that big that big knock that I had was from a, a decent sized chub. That one's probably, whoa. Very fat fish, not very long, um, but it's probably about three pound, that one. Uh, sort of typical Bristol Avon stamp fish if you catch a fish over five pound on the Bristol Avon you're doing very well so this is sort of like uh, the uh, sort of average adult size on the Bristol Avon lovely fish you can find them in most of the swims most of the stretches but uh, there you go cracking fight cracking bite and well worth it on it so there we go, I did manage to catch a half decent chub in the end and that's what fishing's all about, just persevering. Little did I know though that I'd be catching a real cracker on my next session. Well guys, have I got a treat for you. If you watched the last episode of um, me jig fishing on the Bristol Avon, you'd have seen that I caught a couple of really nice chub, um, but couldn't quite get that five pounder. I've come out again today and I've done it. Second cast of the day, five pound two ounce, on a little jig, absolutely amazing. Check the girth and the size of this chub, absolutely ridiculous. Look at that, <laughs> that is absolutely insane. So thick across the belly, so thick across the back. Look at the girth on it, absolutely nuts. Fantastic, on a little tiny little jig. Same as what I was doing in the last video, kind of got a bit addicted to it now. It just, it's so easy to do. And uh, yeah, it's a bit wet, but I've got a couple of hours and how better to spend it catching fish like this. Absolutely insane. So what a cracking chub that was. And happy with that, I decided to switch my focus away from chub and onto pike. The Bristol Avon holds many pike, so I was roving around with float fish dead baits and uh, hoping to connect with one. They're not all monsters, but there's some really nice fish in the Bristol Avon, so I was going to give it a go. Right guys, so as you can see, bait's in position just behind me. Just put a float fish mackerel down in the margins. Um, looks like you've got a bit of a deep hole there. This is another area to look for, you know, on rivers. This river's mainly shallow, so you're looking for these deeper pools, and that's hopefully where the pike are going to be. 
said, I don't normally give it too long, 10, 15 minutes tops, and then I'll be moving on, trying another spot. You have to be mobile to try and catch these river pike. So yeah, tense times, and we'll see uh, if one comes out for us. Well, here we go then, guys. First e socks of the day. Um, it's probably about five or six pound. Uh, mean looking thing. Sorry I didn't get the bite or the fight or anything. Um, this is the fourth swim I've tried now, and uh, I just dropped in this one, and literally that sprat went in the water and it was gone within two minutes. So that's what I mean with finding them. You really do have to look for them on rivers. I've tried a lot of swims that look good, but there's no, they're just not there. Or if they are there, they've, they've had a big meal and they're not feeding. That's the thing with predators. They're not feeding every day. You know, if, if they've eaten a big roach yesterday, or a big bream or something, you know, then they're not gonna be, they'll just lie there on the bottom. And although you might tempt them on lures, you won't, uh, you won't get them on dead baits, unless they're really having it. So yeah, there we go. Nice pike. Oops. A bit lively, so we're we'll, uh, slipping back. Let's see if we can get another one. Cool. Nearly did a nose dive putting her back, but uh, we're putting in back rather. But uh, he's gone back fine, which is the main thing. You've got to be careful with pike, you know. Um, they are delicate fish. I know they're, they're the top of the food chain. I know in the aquatic world, but. Um, they are delicate. You've got to be careful handling them and make sure, always make sure you give them time to revive. They do, they do give it, regardless of what some people say, they do give it pretty hard in the fight. So, yeah. Anyway, so that was caught on a little sprat. One of these, you can get them from any, uh, any tackle shop or any supermarket. They're cheap, dead good bait to use, especially on a river like this where there's a lot of small roach and stuff. That's what the pike are feeding on. So there's no reason why they shouldn't take, you know, one of those. And that one obviously wanted it, put it right in front of its nose and it had it straight away. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Just get the hooks in this one. All I'm doing is sticking one hook in the head, one hook down along the flank. Give you a closer look. So there you go, you got, you got one hit, hook there in the head, one hook down along the flank there dropping it in the margins. I've got two trebles on, I would use one with a sprat, but um, I've got mackerel as well, some joey mackerel, so I've been using slightly bigger bait. And all I've got going on, everybody who goes pike fishing will know, you'll know this setup, it's so easy to do, it's one of the reasons why I like pike fishing. It's got a big float, a stop knot up the line which locks the, which stops the float when you're at the right depth, so you can change that stop, slide that stop knot up and down the line down to some some ball weight just keep the float to cock the float and I've got a bead just to protect the knot and I've got my wire trace and my fish with a couple of troubles on it so it's all you need I mean you can just keep that set up on one rod just move up and down and you do get bites eventually I know it's taken four swims but hey hopefully the next four swims will all produce a fish so let's see how we get on
Well, my prediction of catching a pike in every other swim definitely didn't work out that day and I was only able to locate the one. I tried hard in all the swims, running the baits through just like in this part of the video and uh, yeah, they just weren't having it, I don't know why. Um, I've been there plenty of times and caught in pretty much every other swim so it was just one of those days which you can often get in pike fishing. It's been quite a hard season to be honest for us on the rivers and uh, although like I said I tried every swim even making some difficult casts uh, it just didn't happen for me that day on the Bristol Laven but I was hopeful for the next session that I'd spend out on the bank. I didn't have to wait long until I was out on the bank again. This time we were targeting the royalty fishery for the stunning pike that it holds. It's quite difficult the royalty fishery in that it's very popular. This means that it's often hard to get spaces or the fish are harder to catch because they've seen so much pressure. But nevertheless we set about catching that once in a lifetime fish like everyone does on the royalty fishery. So see how we got on. Right then guys it's bloody freezing and uh... Yeah, we've probably been sat here in the pile swim for about half an hour, do you reckon? Yeah, and uh, not a take. We've seen uh, three half decent rolls. John's convinced one of them's a pike. I'm not so sure because I didn't see it. But yeah, nothing's really having it. So the best thing with a piking is just to keep moving. And uh, so we're going to look for a different swim in a minute, try a different area. We can always come back here later because it's quite close to the So we've been here all day and finally John's smiling because a pike has picked up a whole mackerel and it's running off of it out there. Are you going to hit into it John? This is the moment folks, that tense moment. Go on. In. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Wow, it's taken a very long time. But these Rory Pike are really pressed. John Rack the feels a good and I'll figure that ever. Yeah. Right, okay. Get this net up sorted out, everything going. Bigger than what we're making out. Here we go. Let's get him in the net. Let's get him in the net. There we go. Nice, nice pike. Well done, Johnny boy. Oh, that is a nice pike. Right, so here we go, John. Yeah, it's kicking off a little bit. So it's <laughs> trying all the It's been an epic struggle, hasn't it? We've just spent all, like pretty much all day fishing for these, tried numerous different swims and then we've ended up back in the start of the first one we started in this morning. And there obviously yeah. was one here the whole time, yeah. that's the thing. So we had a, I had a good feeling that there was one mooching about, we'd seen a few swirls so I thought there was a good chance that there was one here but we couldn't get it this morning and then, I mean half an hour in this swim just as it's starting to get a little bit darker and yeah this is just taken off. Sweet. Took a really big bait, so I was half expecting it to be of some decent size, and I mean, it's better than I've had in recently. It's, Fourteen and a half uh, yeah. pound, yeah. We're gonna, we weighed it with the sling, so it's might be a bit from, bigger. Yeah. It might be fifteen. But, but yeah, it's one of my biggest I've caught, so it's something for me. Yeah. Right, let's get a photo and we'll slip him back.
So after that cracking result on the royalty for John, I returned home and my targets had completely changed. I was still thinking about predators, but I was after a big perch. So I went to a local commercial fishery with Kev, and uh, it's a place that holds a lot of childhood memories for us. We didn't catch any perch, even though we tried hard for them, but we did have some awesome fun with some cracking commercial carp. It's got mail, isn't it? It's got a massive tail on it. The size of the body. <laughs> Stay still. It's mugging you off. Mugging me off on and off the bank. <laughs> well, is it going to stay still? There we go, look. Lovely curve. You got a bit bored perch fishing, haven't you? Yeah, well, no, I've got the perch rod out, but I just thought there was some carp just messing about on the top, so I thought I'd just nail a couple while I was bored, you yeah. know, while I'm waiting for the perch. So, a little eight pound common, nailed on a bit of floating crust, similar to the tactics in my uh, video that I made yesterday. Sorry. On a size six quarter wide gape hook. Um, just going to pop him back now. So the carp is still taking the bread out there, so hopefully we'll nail one or two more before well, these yeah. perch decide to start yeah. feeding. Get in there, mate. Well done. Thank you. There you go, mate. There we go, guys. My turn to catch one on my little tiny ugly stick because I didn't have enough of a rod to use, so I thought oh, I'll use that. And it was actually quite good fun on a little tiny little rod. So, yeah, little one to catch up with Kev and uh, see if we can catch some more. Whoop. Without it falling on the floor. <laughs> <laughs>
Well done, Ken. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice looking fish. Let's have a look at it in the net. Yeah, nice scaly. Oh, nice scaly one there. Well done, Ken. Really nice. Yeah, doing the right thing there, I think. <laughs> Get him back. I'm not going to stress it out any more than I am need to. Thumbs up for the camera. So there we go. What fun afternoon that was spent catching carp from this little commercial fishery. It really does hold a lot of childhood memories and you always feel like you're in with a chance. I spent a lot of times there just surface fishing in winter with bread, like what we did in this video. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to be out on the bank catching fish. If that's what you like doing too, we'd like to hear from you. So please like and subscribe and even comment on the video just if you enjoyed it or anything you think that we could improve on. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Blogger and Instagram. We've also got a Facebook group full of anglers of all abilities sharing their fishing adventures. So why not come and join in and hopefully you can catch some much better fish than we're, than we're doing. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for another video guys. And as always, tight lines. <laughs>